Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a special event that's going to take place right now. 2150 to hit Attention all units. Suspects were last seen in a white Plymouth with a blue top. License number Nora Nora Edwards. 3G Roberts. 2150 to headquarters. On the morning of May 21st, Dan Matthews and Shotgun Tom Kelly drove into the car show in Upland. Little did they know they would soon be involved in one of their most difficult capers as head of the highway patrol. Attention all units, I'm on my way. 10-4. Hi, I'm Shotgun Tom Kelly and welcome to Cruisin'. We're here at the Cooper Museum in Upland, and we're here for a car show, but we got a very special car here. And this is my buddy, Gary Goltz. How you doing, Gary? I'm doing good, 10-4. This is Gary Goltz's 55 Buick Century. You've been a big fan of Highway Patrol, as I have, but it was like in the late 50s, early 60s. Gary, you love that show. Attention all units, this is Dan Matthews. I love that show. And the reason you put this car together was because you wanted a car like that was used on that show. 10-4. Come in, 2217. Now tell me, how'd you find this car? I was had a car washed and I was looking through Hemmings thumbing through while they were washing my car, and I saw this 55 Buick. It was in Sacramento, and I said, you know, I gotta go check that car out. And then the next thing you know, I had a business trip up to Sacramento, and I bought the car for 6,500 bucks, and I had it shipped right down here to the Fontana area. And now, $200,000 later, I got a replica car, just like Broderick drove. Now, I gotta tell you, folks, when he's driving down the street, and people see this car, obviously it's a police car, but it's a, on the logo on the, on the side, people are trying to figure out, well, where have I seen this car before? And if it's parked at a parking lot, it absolutely attracts attention. It's, it's an amazing vehicle. It's an, it's an attention getter, even if, as I said, you want to, you want to see how I get attention? Yeah, get attention for it. <laughs> He's got all the whistles and all the bells, folks. But I'll tell you, this car is used in many uh, parades. We've been in the Hollywood Christmas Parade with this car every year. And it's just a real standout vehicle. Well, I got to tell you, Gary, it is great cruising with you yes, it is. Always in this Highway Patrol car. We've done the Christmas Parade. We've done a yep. lot of stuff in it, my friend. Oh, we sure have. We got, like Neil Young's song, we've been through some things together. <laughs> So really, when you use the siren, it's, uh, you know, you got to use it sparingly. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially yeah. this siren, because this thing is loud. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, now, it's, let me... a, it's, it's really a fire truck siren. It's probably a lot bigger than what they had on the car. You know, I've been in this, I've been in this car with you so many times in parades, driving around streets. Uh, how's the maneuverability, like the, st the steering? Well, you know, it, 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 it's, it's power steering, and it does a great job, but it's still a 55 Buick, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's still, you know, awkward. It's not like what we drive today, but I've, I've tried to uh, soup it up to as many of the standards as I can with the disc brakes, power disc brakes, the power steering, the cruise control. But, you know, when it comes down to it, it's still a car that's almost as old as us. The other thing I'm into for those uh, who know me really well or who Google me, they're gonna see I'm also a judo man. I've been doing judo since I was uh, 10 and a half years old and I'm an eighth degree black belt. I'm the former president of the US Judo Association and I have a huge judo program with the city of Claremont. Uh, and I've worked with the CHP and I've worked with the LAPD as a defensive tactics instructor. So I've actually, you know, uh, become very much at one with a lot of my law enforcement hero uh, for real buddies and uh, have trained them and have worked with them. So, you know, the whole thing just has come together over the years. Now, this is exactly how Broderick Crawford would dress in, in a trench coat and the hat, always on the show. 
And uh, he used uh, not only uh, these cars, these Buick Centuries from 1955, but he used other cars, right? 55 Mercury, 55 Oldsmobile, 56 Buick, 56 Oldsmobile, I mean, 57 Mercury, 58 Dodge Coronet, 59 Dodge Coronet. There were several others too. The actual cars that were used by the CHP were specially built just for the CHP. There were 268 of them. It was called a Buick Model 68. It was a two-door coupe sedan with uh, a post. And they only made these cars for the CHP. The model that the, the uh, regular consumer could buy was the Buick 48, which was the special version. The engine in the Century was a 322 V8, and the engine in the Special was a 264, a little bit smaller. So the CHP wanted the one stock with the heavy duty engine and they bought them and they said it was the fastest car Detroit made. However, I got a little, little story to tell you. The Wall Street Journal about five years ago did a story on my car. And I told the whole thing about the CHP buying these cars because they were the fastest cars. Then I was reading the comments from the uh, readers and one guy wrote, that wasn't the real reason the CHP bought these cars. He said, that Governor Brown, back in the 50s, his brother-in-law owned a Buick dealership, and that's why they bought the cars. I'll be done. <laughs> that's something else. You know, you know, we always thought that uh, they bought this car because of the speed, and uh, this is a very heavy car. Well, you know, the original ones were about 3,500, and I probably have at least another 1,000 on this. Wow. So I'm gonna say this thing's between 4,000 and 5,000 pounds. Wow. They could make an argument technically that this was one of the fastest off the line cars from Detroit, but as that reader of the Wall Street Journal pointed out, who knows? How fast can you go with this car? I've had this car up to 80. 80? Maybe even 90. Wow. It's a V8 and it's a 264 cubic inch. I mean, back then this was probably one of the more powerful cars that Detroit put out which is how they justified buying a more expensive car than a Chevy or a Ford for the highway patrol. And when I first got the car from the uh, dealer in Sacramento, he had it shipped on here via train. And when I took it home, I noticed immediately there wasn't a gas cap. So I needed a gas cap. So I bought this car in uh, May of 1995. So I looked up and I found a classic Buick parts company in Chino. It was called Classic Buick. So I drove down there with the car and I met the owner and I told him I needed a gas cap for a 55 Buick. And as I was paying, I noticed on the side of the wall, he had a picture of a 55 Buick highway patrol car. And when I looked at it, my jaw dropped and I turned to the owner and said, you know, that's why I bought this car. I love that show. And I really wanted it to look like the car in that show. And he turned and said to me, you know, I usually don't do this, he said, but I'm going to do, take an exception. And he wrote down a name of a guy, and he gave it to me, a guy named Les Randolph, who we'll introduce to you in a little bit. And he said, give him a call. So I called that guy up, and lo and behold, he had an actual 55 Buick, the real type that they used by the CHP, because if you notice on mine, mine is a hardtop convertible. The one that they really used was a Post. I didn't know that. I was, I was a fan of the show, not a car guy. So I drove out to his house, and before you know it, by the end of that night, Les was uh, contracted to turn my car into uh, a highway patrol unit. Six months later, I had a uh, clone uh, of the one used on the TV show, and that was uh, towards the end of 1995. And since that time, I've been just improving the car. I mean, I drove it. I said it needed air conditioning. We put it in. It needed power steering. We put it in. It needed cruise control. We put it in. Right now it's driving great since I had all the suspension redone on it recently. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I had uh, accident where I had problems with the chassis and Les had to have uh, parts actually fabricated. So they don't make parts for the... Well, uh... it would have been difficult to find them. Wow. So he just had him make them. Then one day Les said, you know, I'm tired of all the electronic problems. 
you know, when you have a classic car, electronics is like the, the biggest Achilles heel. He kept the car for almost nine months and he rewired the entire car. Every wire, every switch, every circuit breaker in the car has been rewired. And we'll show you the back uh, box that he built. When Gary built this car, he started adding so many accessories on this thing and we were starting to have wiring issues and we were dropping circuits. So we decided to go ahead and completely redo the power section of this car. So what we did was completely made all new harnesses from bumper to bumper, redid all the sockets, switches, everything. All his strobe panels are behind the fuse panel. Uh, this thing ended up with about 24 circuits on it total. The, we have cooling fans in this box because the, the, the uh, amps and the, con and the module controllers do pr produce heat. We have a secondary battery over here because we're uh, draining the battery at one time. We've got an auxiliary air pump, uh, vacuum pump in here for the uh, disc brakes because the engine didn't have enough vacuum for the brakes. We've got a cutoff switch here to, for storage for the car. If you want to shut the car down, you can shut everything down. This also does have an outside sound system as well as an inside sound system. Both amps are within this panel as well. I actually told Les what I wanted was when I take the car to parades and I'm doing interviews like our show today and I play the Highway Patrol theme song, I want it to sound like the music is really there, like it was dubbed in, but I want it to come from my car, and it does. Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. We used these for the strobes, but he needed backup lights. So what we did was we ended up putting the backup lights in here like they do the Roadmasters, but these are out of Cadillac. It's like a Cadillac from the 50s, you know? It doesn't have quite the rack and pinion steering of a modern car, but uh, we've upgraded it substantially enough so I can drive it comfortably. Right. It has air conditioning. We have an A6 compressor over here. Kind of follow the vintage theme. Um, we gutted the panel over here so that we get the power brakes up here. We've got a battery isolator because it's got dual batteries on it. Here's another cutoff switch for the front battery in case you want to cut it out. Um, there's charging ports up here uh, for storing the car so it's constantly being charged. Um, power steering, which this car didn't have power steering on it to begin with. Uh, all the bracketry and everything are off 65 Riviera to get the alternator and the, and the AC on it. It's got cruise control over there. If you notice on the oil bath filter, it says AFE. AFE is Advanced Flow Engineering, AFE Power. Uh, my friend Shiriar Nick Nyakon is the CEO of the company, and he's also a six degree black belt and one of my top judo students. When I built the car, I said, Nick, I want to have an AFE power filter. He said, you know, classics aren't our specialty, but I've forced him into it. So he actually, I'll let you tell the story. He made a filter and it's in the car. Yeah, I had, a, I had no choice. I had to give up. <laughs> so we made one filter for him, cut the mold, cut everything else. So he actually has a proper filter in there right now. High flow air filter. So there's one of them made. Now some of the other things that the car has is power disc brakes. I mean, that was one of the biggest complaints the CHP had about the car. They were 4,000 pounds and they took a long time to stop. And being I drive the car so much, I asked my friend Les if he could do something about it. And he had to design his own power disc brake system, which he installed in the car. He also put in a hybrid cooling system, which uh, keeps the car from overheating. You got this car equipped with PA, you've got the siren, you've got the lights. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll carry around uh, my walkie-talkie and as people are looking at the car, I'll stand over in the distance and I'll talk to them from the car. Like they'll shoot pictures of the car and I'll go, hey, uh, leave $5 in the door, please. Or they'll say something about Broderick Crawford and I'll go, 2150 to headquarters. Move, 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 10 <laughs> four. And they're looking like, where'd that come yeah, from? I know. <laughs> and, I, and I'll see a guy wearing a baseball hat and I say, you in the baseball hat, pull it over. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I've heard you say, uh, hey, la you, the lady with that dog. Yeah, you don't have a license for that dog. We're taking the dog in. <laughs> and if they're cute, I'll take them in too. <laughs> that's not politically correct. Yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, you've had a lot of fun with this car. Yeah, a lot of people love this I've car. Met, I've met so many people over the years. You name it, I've met them. I led a parade with James Cameron as the uh, Grand Marshal, and that was the year Titanic came out. I was up at the Pasadena Playhouse, and my friend owned the bar, 
and they were doing a play, an August Wilson play, with Lawrence Fishburne and Angela Bassett, and I met them both. And, 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 and Lawrence Fishburne came out, and we took pictures in front of the car, and he asked me if I was going to the play, and I told him I hadn't gotten tickets yet, and he goes like this. And he points to some guy, he said, get him hooked up front row, him and his wife. Oh, and that's then we were cool. at the play. Oh, that's but great. Probably one of my best encounters was with my musical legendary hero, Neil Young. Oh, yes. Neil Young loves classic cars, and he's particularly a big Buick connoisseur. I mean, when he formed his first band, when he was up in Canada, he bought a 48 Buick Roadmaster Hearst and he would take all his instruments in the back where the caskets would go, and he'd pull the thing out and all the instruments would be there, and he loved that car. In fact, the song, Long May You Run, when he introduced it in 1974, he talked about how it's a car from the heart, uh, about his 48 Buick Roadmaster, and he talked about it, and, he, and at one of his concerts one time, he opened up the second act with the opening of Highway Patrol, so I knew he loved this show. So I was at, a, at Irvine Meadows, and they had me park the car next to his tour bus. His tour bus was a monument to classic Buicks. It had a Buick grill on the front. The side windows were, were circular, so they looked like Buick portholes. Yeah. He had two 48 Buicks built into the skylight wow. of the car, and that was the skylight. And then the back of the car, he had taillights from a 60s Buick. So I parked the car next to his car, and he came walking out, and he saw the car. He, holding a beer in his hand. His manager, Elliot Roberts, who was part of Giffen and Roberts, uh, David Giffen, he comes walking over and Neil goes, this is a great car. And I immediately put on the broader Crawford Highway Patrol theme. I handed the mic to Neil and Neil started talking through the mic. And while he was talking through the mic, I switched the CD from uh, the one with the Highway Patrol music to Mirrorball. That was the album he did at that time with Pearl Jam. And when this title track came out, Neil started singing along to himself through my car. Oh, wow. It was, it was just like an amazing moment. But this car is a real driver. When I bought it, the odometer read 49,000 miles. The car now has close to 120,000 miles on it. So I've literally put nearly 80,000 plus miles on this car in the last 26, 27 years driving it, including a trip across the entire Route 66. And you never believe Shotgun, who was my shotgun oh, on that I trip. Do. I know who that was. The fellow who drove across country with me in this car, may he rest in peace, was Kelly Crawford, right. Broderick, Broderick Crawford's son. That's right. And we drove the car the entire Route 66, and we got to know each other really, really well. And we spent two weeks on the road together. And uh, it, was, it was a dream come true for a Highway Patrol fan. To be able to get to know uh, the, the actual flesh and blood son of Broderick Crawford, the Academy Award winning actor for All the King's Men, 1949. The car has been used for a lot of charity events and to support the real CHP. In fact, I'm a life member of the California Highway Patrol 1199 Foundation. 1199 is the call they use when they need help. And the 1199 Foundation is there to support the CHP and this has become a fixture at many of their events. It's also been at the Academy at least a half a dozen right. or more times for their retirees days. And it's often used for uh, supporting fallen officers, unfortunately. But the car is well respected and treated like part of the CHP. In fact, I've often talked about it to my kids and the family that when I go, it'll probably be willed to the CHP. The, the kitty car, I got a call from a guy one day and he says, I got something I think you're going to want to buy. And I said, okay, is it bigger than a bread box? He said, a little bit. I said, can you bring it over to my house and show it to me? He said, yeah. So he came over to my house and he showed it to me and I bought it. <laughs> of, course. of course. Of course, we had to do a few alterations on it. We had to get the trim on the doors. We had to get the portholes on it. And uh, after a few tweaks here and there, it became the, the mini kitty car that goes with the Buick everywhere it goes. You know, you, you've got so much wonderful uh, uh, nostalgia about this well, car. It, it, you know, Shotgun, it's even more than that. I mean, it's like, you know, I never got to meet Broderick. My mother met him. Mm -hmm. But I got to be best friends with his son. And then Bill Boyette, 
who played uh, right. Sergeant Williams in the later episodes and Officer Johnson in the earlier episodes. Right. I got to be best friends with him, real best friends with him. And I still go out to dinner with his wife. Is that she, right? She's a class act lady, and we still go out and, and commiserate about Bill. I mean, Herb Strzok, who directed the first episode, he also did the famous horror movie in the 50s, Og. And uh, Strzok and I became so close, and he shared with me intimate inside knowledge of the show. I mean, the pilot episode was his complete direction. So everything that happened in the show after the pilot, the way they had the roadblock, the narration, and everything was all you know, put in place by Herb Strzok. And he and I got to be best friends. Uh, John Locke, he was an officer in many right. of the episodes. His son, uh, Rusty Locke, comes to 1040. He Absolutely. dresses up like his dad. Yep. Uh, I mean, you know, there's fans. You know, I was a fan of a lot of TV shows, but I can honestly say that in the case of Highway Patrol, it's gone beyond that. I'm, I mean, I feel like I'm part of it. Yeah, you, you know? are. I mean, it's like I bonded with these people. Yes. I mean, spoke at uh, Art Gilmore's funeral. I got a book on Highway Patrol, and it's and it's more a book on Gary and his memories of all the things I've done with the people I've met and the stories I know and the inside information they've shared with me. It's a treasure trope. Of, uh, I mean, as a kid who loved that show and moving out here as an adult, I, I, I've had nirvana with it. I mean, I, 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 it's like I, I got to the point where I'm part of it. On the morning of May 21st, Dan Matthews headed on a highway patrol, went to a car show to be on a broadcast by Mike Smith. Little did he know he would soon be involved in one of his heaviest capers, which his friend Shotgun Tom Kelly, that the Highway Patrol had ever encountered. 10 4. Well, thanks a lot, folks, for uh, watching us here on Cruise, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. And Gary, thank you for talking about your wonderful Highway Patrol car, the 1955 Buick Century. My pleasure, and remember, Leave blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. No matter how new, the safest device in your car is you. Oh yeah, and the clowns at the circus, they're real funny, but on the highway, they're murder. This is Broderick Crawford saying 10-4. Until then, remember, the careless driver isn't driving his car, he's aiming it. This is Broderick Crawford saying, see you next week. may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. That's us! These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. And we have women now, too!